India will begin 2024 with a note of optimism right at the start. ISRO's Aditya L1 mission is expected to reach its destination on 6th of January. This will be a major push in India's space exploration program after the heady success of the country's moon, moon mission this year. Another key milestone is expected to be the launch of NISAR, the Low Earth Orbit Observatory jointly developed by NASA and ISRO in the first quarter of 2024. NISAR data will help scientists observe climate change in great detail and its success may be the beginning of many more collaborations between ISRO and NASA, something that is expected to accelerate India's space program immensely. India plans to launch a new orbiter to Venus called Shukrayan in 2024 too. On the international front, Russian and U.S. space agencies have agreed to keep uh, working together to deliver crews to the International Space Station until at least 2025. The space sector, including its so-called cross-flights that involve sending crews from different nationalities on one spacecraft, is a rare area of cooperation remaining between Moscow and Washington since Russian troops uh, sent Russia, in fact, entered and sent troops to Ukraine. To talk about it, let me go straight to New York City, where Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, NASA scientist, is joining us live. Dr. Ghosh, really appreciate your time. 2023 will be known for India becoming the first country to land in the southern polar region of Moon. What do you think 2024 will be about in the space of space and technology? Well, there is a lot of exciting problems out there. So let me just run through some of them. Um, one is, um, so far, if you, when you saw launch vehicles, they launched and then they were destroyed. They fell into the sea and they were destroyed. And as a result, launch costs were very high. So every time you flew something, you had to also account for the cost of the hardware. So what Elon Musk is doing, he's developing something called Starship, where the entire um, vehicle, launch vehicle can be reused. This will lower costs by as much as 95 percent. Um, this will make um, missions to Mars affordable, human missions to Mars. Uh, this will make missions to other planets much more affordable, like um, missions to Jupiter probably were very expensive. That would come down. And then it also, there's a promise of point-to-point -point transportation on Earth. Uh, so you could fly from one place to another on Earth in maybe 30 seconds. 30 minutes. So that is, I think, the most exciting thing. The second exciting thing is perhaps humans will go back to the moon, this time not to explore, but to actually set up a base, much like the International Space Station. So in, in addition to the um, uh, base by uh, NASA, which is the Artemis program, Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin, is also planning to set up a base. So that is going to be fascinating to see uh, humans on, on the moon um, 365 days a year. Um, another interesting thing, which is probably not as much in the news glare, is that NASA is about to launch a satellite to Europa. Um, Europa is a satellite of, um, um, in the outer solar system of Jupiter. And why is it so fascinating? So below the crust of Europa, there is an hmm. ocean, and the ocean carries double the volume of water on all of Earth's oceans combined. There's so, so there's so much water um, there, and it's a salty ocean. And it is since it's under the crust, maybe 10 kilometers under the crust, it is absolutely dark. And, um, and what is the similarity with Earth? The similarity with Earth is the Earth, oceans are also dark below a certain depth, maybe one kilometer. And yet there is, it is teeming with life. So could Europa be teeming with life? So, um, so in Mars, we, we, we know that there's water there, but we're probably um, getting to the th place where there's no current life here. But in Europa, there, be, there can be current life. So there's going to be a mission there, and I'm sure there's going to be follow-up missions. And I know there is prototypes being tested here on um, on Earth under Antarctica, um, like robotic submarines, to go into those oceans and see whether there is present life on, on Europa. Um, then there is um, about Mars. Where are we about Mars? In Mars, we know that there was past 
water, definitely. But is, was there past life? Was there past fossils? Um, is there present micro um, organisms? So to address that, uh, there's a sample return mission from NASA, which is, which is trying to take off maybe the later part of the decade. Um, and, I, and, and once those samples arrive in uh, laboratories on Earth, we'll have a very good idea of whether Mars has life or not. Setting up of a base on Moon, that certainly sounds really fascinating. So Europa is next, not Venus, because, you know, India plans to launch a new orbiter to Venus called Shukriyan in 2024. So it's a fascinating place. It's very close to Earth. And uh, the Russians have sent a whole lot of missions. The thing about Venus is that the surface is very hot, more than 500 degrees centigrade. So all the uh, missions, the Russian missions which landed on Earth, on Venus um, were destroyed pretty quickly, but they did give some information. But India is not launch, doing a lander, uh, it's doing an orbiter, which will teach a lot about the climate. And the interesting thing about Venus is to understand why did Venus evolve the way it did. It did. And it seems that they had a runaway greenhouse effect. So this is to do with climate change. So um, what is runaway greenhouse effect? Um, at some point, this is um, called feedback loops. So you have a neg- you, basically you have a situation where this, the global warming on Venus became worse and worse with time. So why did it happen? And then another interesting thing about Venus is there was a gas which was de- detected called phosphine, which is related to life on. Um, Venus and 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 it is controversial whether it's really phosphine or not, but there's something to check out whether maybe in some miracle there is some life form on Venus. If you recall, hydrothermal vents on Earth do uh, have microscopic life, so it's very surprising that in extreme environments there can still be life. So so yes, this was about the Venus mission. All right. A lot of fascinating thoughts there. Thank you so much, sir. Well, that's all from me and the entire team. Hope you liked what we have uh, compiled for you in this last episode of 2023 of Big Fight. Uh, It has ended without any shouting, without any fighting. See you next year.